You're listening to the Go Lightly Martial Hour on freedomtalkradio.net. Radio.net. All right, we made it late, but we're here. 12 08. We made it, yes. yes. On uh, 12 08 pm on Friday, July, what is it, the 3rd in the year 2015, the year of our Lord Yahweh, Lord Jesus Christ, Brian Manigo, likely Marshall. <laughs> the star of Bethlehem occurring for the third time, not the second time. The third time. The second time was at his rebirth, January 11th, 1944. However, the world of the deluded refuses to acknowledge that, even though the information has been made public now for many years. Mm. They refuse. Are we concerned? No. Because, why? Well, (laughs) why are we late? Thank you, Adam Yates. (laughs) <laughs> you pointed something out to me. I said yesterday, hi, Mark Saxon. <laughs> How are you, Mark? Good to hear from you. Um, uh, what, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The name well, changed. You just spelled something. I told no, you. No, no, no. It, wasn't, it wasn't spelling. It wasn't spelling. It was the, the number of characters. It was Adam Yates who, who pointed out that uh, Yahweh... Lord Jesus Christ, Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall with the hyphen was 51 characters and I thought <laughs> I'd counted it as 49. But anyway, it's all good because what this has forced now is I have been on to BDM. Hi, Diana. On to BDM for the third day in a row throughout the <laughs> Star of Bethlehem. And I get a different person each time. So each person learns that the Christ is back. And this time... We hit the jackpot because although they have not yet received the registered mail documents I sent for the name change, because I want to replace page six of it, reducing the name to YHWH, which is much better, the Hebrew spelling of Yahweh, and then other given names, Lord Jesus Christ, Brian Leonard, family name, go lightly, hyphen Marshall, which comes in at 49. <laughs> Just under the barrier. Well, it's the same as the Vatican III. Yes, she um, she created a file now with a reference number, reference number 01467326. So now it is in Service New South Wales, which is the like the reception for the government, and it is recorded. Uh, Brian Leonard Marshall changing the name to Yahweh Y H W H now. Lord Jesus Christ, Brian Leonard. So it's all good. And, uh, of course, uh, whether uh, you anglicise it to Yahweh, the uh, longer spelling doesn't matter, Y-H-W-H, the DNA code to those made in his image, of course. How, how much more perfect can that get? So, it's all official now. as perfect as you. It's <laughs> in the system. Even though it sent me into a panic first thing this morning. So Yah's talking to me and I'm just saying nothing as I'm typing away and things were freezing. And <laughs> Anyway, it's all good. That's the way it goes. And uh, yeah, hi, hi, Diana. Yeah, all right. John, John uh, Hall should be over there soon. He was asking if we're going to have a show and I said, yes, late. Now, this might just be it. Have you got anything else to talk about, baby? Good joke, man. <laughs> yeah, well, go on. <laughs> Why do you <laughs> think they have a little tiny uh, camera in your new computers? Mine doesn't have one, but yes, go on. What do you think it is? Well, to find everybody, of course. To find everybody, right? Yes. 
And they made a, 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 like a, a discovery. When they, this thing came out of Tel Aviv, and they found that there was rabbis shagging ducks, so they better not, you better cover it up. Because right? that's what all rabbis do now, because they get into all sorts of abominations. So they, that, they all put a bit of tape over the top of their... So how on point is that? What are we talking about? <laughs> We're talking about how they spy on all computers. See, all new computers, and going back for a long way. For example, I've got a computer here which I haven't had online. It's all, there's 181 so far malware in this computer. Right. That's right. the one that you haven't had online. Oh. Mm. Right. And it's got a, because I put tape over the, the front of it. Because these things transmit anyhow. You don't have to be plugged in. That's how they cost, that's how you pay $100 a month. But a computer will go straight up into the nearest uh, receiver. Mm. Because I'll park like the Asia guy next door. He'll just have a thing targeting our computers here and everything we do on the computers. That one has never been online, for example. Yes. will also have all sorts of malware in it. Mm. Just they download it all the time. Mm. That's why I got, that's a mirror computer. I've got another one here, which is never switched on, mm. which is a mirror of that one. Yes. So when they stuff that up, I just go to the other one and reload it. Right? Mm. So I've learned the hard way about that. Yeah, so we're just looking at the um, uh, malware. There's 181, the last look I had on that computer, which is the one that uh, Adam wanted us to buy for him, which I didn't. But that's what's, where the shit hit the fan with the dog and all that. Mm -hmm. And um, ended up the dog being bloody burnt alive in the, in the car. Half cooked. Half cooked, yeah. Which was his dream that he had several months before. Yeah. <sighs> All so right. he's gone, he's out of here, so we get up with an extra computer, but that extra computer, which was bought online, must have all the uh, malware put in it before we got it. Oh, Mark is confirming, he says, yes, Windows and the new iCore processors, even if they are turned off, yeah. they can be accessed. Yes, you're absolutely right. That's right. We've experienced it for years, haven't we? Mm. Oh, yeah, I have, yeah. Well, I remember our first trip to Papua New Guinea. I come back and, and my computer system oh, that my mother well, was... Well, three in a row fizzled. ...was uh, completely blue screened. Yeah. Everything gone. Yeah. Programming, everything gone. Being turned off the entire time we were away. Yeah. And then uh, happened again at Sedgwick. Yeah. So well, there were three computers and all that, ha that, that happened to. Mm. Yeah. All right, so what else we got to talk about? Start Bethlehem last night. Yes, well, you've uploaded already, but we got a um, reflection off the lake, which is very spectacular, of the uh, two planets. Um, over time, uh, Jupiter has come down, if you like, or Venus has gone up in relationship to the position because Venus is travelling at a faster, faster rate uh, around the Earth, or around the Sun, rather. And um, we got the two reflections on the lake. Well, there's the slight ripple to the lake with the wind, and uh, very, very spectacular. So we've uploaded that, and uh, it's worth looking at. We also got the moon, and um, when it was rising over the, the coast, and um, our house here actually lines up with the, uh, where the moon rises and the moon set, or in this case, Star of Bethlehem. Um, when we go down to the ocean, it's actually straight along the coast. So our house is actually lined up with the with the east-west, which is the line along mm. the coast. Mm. So when we come home here, it's east-west, which we look straight across the lake. Yes. We're able to take a, um, a movie of the uh, Star of Bethlehem um, uh, in its uh, reflection on the lake. Yes, it's beautiful. beautiful. beautiful and uh, tonight will be more spectacular, provided there are no clouds. It's, there's no clouds today. And of course, to keep in mind, Vatican is also closed down for July and possibly forever. So uh, that's it. That's another good thing. Yeah, that was the information given to us by the special emissary to the governor of Papua New Guinea. Um, the Vatican. Uh, the Vatican ambassador. ambassador. He, he said I had an appointment with Francis, but then it was cancelled because yeah. the Vatican is being closed for all of July, first time ever. He was astonished, and then he started talking uh, about the uh, prophecies of Nostradamus, mm. of course. Which is what you saw when I was. Yeah, Nostradamus 13, when I, the night I found you. Here it is. Here's the, the upload from last night. Oh, it's had 45 views. How about that? <laughs> uh, 
Oh, the second one's had... Um, no, the first one's had... This was the moon. That moon was spectacular last night. And the sunset as well. Uh, because the moon's also upside down, which no one's talking about. Oh, I think everybody's got so used to it now. Here it is, rising. It was huge and glowing a red gold just above the horizon yeah. and then entered into the clouds for some very interesting photography. So how do people find it? Uh, well, I, I've already sent it around um, Star of Bethlehem and Full Moon July the 2nd, 2015 over Tugum. I've already posted it, tweeted it and sent it to Facebook. So... Uh, haven't seen that. Yeah. Daniel says, nicely done. All right. Yes, yeah, so that was our night last night. Uh, it should be quite spectacular, providing the uh, weather is clear, of course. Yes, yeah, the previous two nights, so uh, we saw it on our way home in the early hours, yeah. high in the sky, and then as it, uh, as it was setting, as we were rotating under it, then the clouds con... Uh, the clouds covered. All right. Let me get back to the... Just fooling around here on the console. Mark is saying, <laughs> hi Ross, hi John, yes, <laughs> finally got over there. Mark is saying that Nostradamus was ahead of his time. It's only a little about Nostradamus. Nostradamus was born on the same date that he predicted the crossing of the Milky Way galaxy by the main planet. 1503. 20th of December, the 21st, 21st. 21st of December. That's based on the old calendar because the new calendar didn't come into um, I'm not sure whether they've calculated back to get the date right because uh, the Gregorian calendar didn't come into existence until 1582 and um, that happened on um, uh, making the 5th of uh, October the 15th so the day before they decided to do it when they realised that the Temple of the Winds is what they called it in the Vatican um, it's a sundial, and it was the astronomers told uh, uh, the Pope that it was out by 10 days. So he ordered that the next day be changed from the 5th to the 15th. So the day before, the sunrise to sunset was 666 minutes, a little bit of triple year. Every, all your children out there already know that. I'm just reminding you adults are probably don't know because you're just fucking stupid. Anyhow, uh, this is the, uh, the reality that things occur and are caused to occur in a synchronistic nature where human beings uh, in the demonic realm which control all of the upper echelons of all governments, churches and so forth. It's just business. It's getting on the business. Right? Um, so uh, that's what it's all about. It's, um, um, they are demonised and therefore a demonised person cannot understand. So therefore you can go out and you can talk to your blue in the face to people in the pub down the street. And they won't get it because mm. they're already demonized themselves. Mm. That's what demons do. They occupy where God creates, I create, and uh, demons or Satan, Lucifer, um, procreates by going into a human being. It can't do any other way of, it just occupies. Mm. So uh, getting back to why the, the reason for the flood was that the human race at that time become so corrupted because of descended from Cain um, and it's a parable uh, but um, they did all sorts of things I was into cannibalism what they are today that's why it's hard to believe for the average Joe uh, to understand that the world out there is so corrupt and so evil at the top and uh, the reasons for wars which we've gone on about before but you go back how many wars you want to go back from the Crimean War onwards? You've got uh, Christians fighting Christians, which is very clever on behalf of the um, people that's in charge of the world, per se, which is the lovely people, aren't they? The uh, Zionists. Swedge. The Swedges. And uh, these are the ones that are above the average Jew. The average Jew probably doesn't have no idea either. 
I have experience, as I said yesterday, with average Jews. So they thought I was a rabbi and I was the first rabbi ever told them the truth. So they must know when a rabbi is talking to them, there's bullshit coming out their lips, right? Mm. So they were very surprised that I was actually talking to their chief rabbis up on the stage and the ex-governor general of Australia and so forth uh, and put them in their place. So they got a big surprise. They want to know when I was going to do seminars. I said, well, not just yet. So, yeah, so that's how it is. The uh, average Jew will make a better Christian than the Christians out there. Mm. I've already condemned all the Christians. That's what this document's all about. Uh, Because mentioning the word Lord, Jesus, Christ, in church is going to be an infringement of copyright. And we've decided to adopt that this is, this is what we learned in um, our latest trip to Papua New Guinea when we were staying with an Italian couple. We were there six nights and uh, ex- extremely well connected, all part of uh, what the Knights of Malta and the Knights of Templar. And They're amazing people. Uh, yeah. um, whole, we just happened to strike the, the most amazing group of Holy people. Holy Order of St. Stephen and... Oh. All, all kinds of... The, the Holy Order of St. Stephen, this guy who's the ambassador for the Vatican gives me his card, right, we've got to do something. And um, all this kind of stuff that's going on. And he's married to one of the richest women, fifth generation of Chinese people, I believe. Chinese in Port Moresby. In Port Moresby. Port Moresby. And um, he's quite a character himself because uh, his wife is extremely jealous of, and rightfully so, because he goes out chasing all these birds every time he goes over something. Overseas and so forth. The Latin lover, so to speak. And um, his wife is not happy about it. So um, she owns everything. This is the whole thing. But she does some lovely work. She has made certain um, upgrades to the hospital system and well, so she's, forth. Yes, she's made what has become a, a world's leading um, heart. Tr- now, this is, this is pretty well how ridiculous it is. But anyway, uh, Port Moresby Hospital, which is a nothing hospital has uh, become the world's leader for heart transplant surgery because she has organised all of the equipment to come in and a roster of the world's finest heart surgeons to come in certain months of the year. And I I think it's through July, August, but uh, it might be two months of the year. They come every year. So people who uh, need to have heart surgery are scheduled for those months at Port Moresby and she has made it first class with equipment and service, etc. Um, but, but, but as it was pointed out to us, you know, there's, there's not, not too many that require open heart surgery or whatever. It, it's the more mundane uh, uh, diseases that get them. Uh, not, for, not for much longer, though. And as we go back there and get our silver water wells <laughs> happening in all of the villages... As Mary said, it's the water. People come, they're still asking for the water. They want the water. Because it was so effective in stopping their sicknesses, all of them. It didn't matter what it was. Because as you know, colloidal silver. That's what I was going to talk about yesterday. Well, we had a rant about that yesterday. How stupid well, they are. Yeah. Uh, well, no. Um, in uh, an email that Adam Yates sent me, he, uh, a friend of his, Adam had been... Uh, telling the friend about colloidal silver. So the colloidal, the, the, oh. the friend goes to the doctor and requests colloidal silver. So apparently he's been under 100 mil injections of colloidal silver and the doctor has told him that the cost of the colloidal silver, because it's so fine, is 2,500 pounds for a bottle or some, something ridiculous like that. It's a highway robbery. Uh, so... You know, they, they can't patent it, however, they can charge, charge a it. fortune. As you know, we rip it. Everybody that we've taught, they rip it. It costs nothing to rip a little bit of electricity or a 9 volt battery. And um, the silver itself is down around $16 US an ounce. So for a very small wire, that's nothing. I paid $3 for a piece of wire that lasts a very long time. That was several years ago. Well, you get an American dollar. There's your, there's your yes, yes, yes. $30 is just it for a dollar. Yep. And uh, it's uh, 99.9% pure, so that's all you need. Yes. Get two of those. We've got an ounce of silver that we bought when mm. we were in uh, Egypt two years ago now and still using that. But uh, everything is a, a rip-off. When we bought that, the guy said, you want Turkish or do you want Egyptian silver? Mm. I don't care. <laughs> as long as it's fine, fine silver. So Mark is continuing. He said, I think Tesla was also... 
all of our technology is based on his inventions and idea now. Because That's all our like smartphones, computers, electric in our homes, Wi-Fi, everything that relies on a coil. He wanted to give us wireless free energy. Well, yes, he did. It's the Jews that come along, JP Morgan's, all the rest of it. They're all the same. and put a meter on everything. Yeah, I've been saying for years that uh, all of your communications should be free, or they will be as uh, part of the kingdom. And all, all of your energy, it doesn't matter what it is, even oil, you don't reinvent the wheel. There's plenty of oil, it's never going to run out. And it's not about the depletion of fossil fuels. Um, but a service fee for, for running it to the pumps, and then from there, you know, we should be paying what uh, Libya was paying. 15 what, cents a litre. Four, four, you know, 14 cents a litre. It, uh, here it is on. Hello. <laughs> You've been... <laughs> Was away from computer for a while. Yes, you certainly were. Anything, anything new happening in your world here? Just type a little message there. Um, we can't put a meter on then. This no, we, yeah, that's exactly right. Well, you don't need to put a meter on anything. They'd put a meter on air if they could. Well, this is what he's. It's a quote. They're from already JP, doing water. J. P. Morgan. If we can't put a meter on it, then we're not interested. That's right. Yeah. That's right. But see, oil just out in Cooper Pity in the middle of Australia, they've discovered so much oil that there's more oil under Australia than there is in the entire world itself. Now get that in your little skull and see if you can work that out. So what are they doing with it? Closing it down. I want that to get out there. Yes. Now the whole, whole uh, idea is that oil is completely something that's renewable. It keeps on making it new out of the depths of the ocean. So you will never run out. Even if you uh, didn't make one more drop of oil, there's more oil under the ground in Australia alone to run the world for thousands upon thousands of years. Australia's got enough coal to run the world for 2,000 years when I was a child. That's what the estimate was then. So uh, coal, they got the largest uh, aluminum in the world, the largest iron ore. In fact, the iron ore is so rich when I was over in West Australia. You could take a piece straight out, blown out the side of a cliff, right? Put it down and put a welding... Uh, clamp on it and draw an arc on it with a welder. That's how much rich it was in iron content. So uh, Australia's got all that. Uh, so it's got the most of the aluminium or aluminium as they say in America, the most iron ore, the, the most silver, the most oil. It just goes on and on and on. And of course you go down there, into any big city and see people living on the street. Just out of Tasmania alone, they take out 5 million per head of population in export. That's what the modern national corporations do. 5 million per head of corporation, per person. Just in Tasmania. Hmm. Speaking of which, Joel is still in Tasmania having a wonderful time. Yeah, it's a and beautiful place. Cold as, that's the only trouble. Well, at, at night time, he said it, it's chilly at night time. Yeah. But it was chilly here last night too because oh. there was no cloud cover. Usually there's a cloud cover and it doesn't, it, but it drop, did drop down to 8 degrees Celsius. Mm. Unusual for it. Very unusual. And it's uh, chilly outside today, although the sun is shining brilliantly. Mm. Um, here it's just saying I'm just working on my health investigation and trial and error. Seems like I'm in another rabbit hole ever since I debunked the last clown and suffered a bit, laugh out loud. Great to be back in the fold. <laughs> uh, now, um, now, what well, we've got some uh, photographs coming in from John. Yeah, John Hall. And you, um, you sent those uh, photographs that uh, Dawn Hall takes from um, the Pacific Northwest, USA. There. This uh, is this is what's packing the uh, the shits with the Vatican and so forth. Because, as you might have uh, recall, we talked about the. Uh, uh, Mount Graham telescopes in the United States and there's one there called Lucifer which is partly owned by the Vatican and of course the Vatican's God is Christ and Father is Lucifer but these are pretty spectacular photographs and images coming in of a solar system uh, lined up with the sun and yes. um, we'll, we'll upload that uh, well, this is, yeah, Dawn Hull as shot and filtered two ways, Pacific Northwest at 
A M. Yeah, very obvious. Look rather beautiful, don't they? Oh, they're gorgeous, now huh? the colours that were reflecting. Well, the we got, of the glass what happened night. was we got the sunset yesterday on the sea, along the beach, and um, the tide was out, and that left little pools, um, uh, pools of water, which we were able to capture as the sun setting and reflecting on these pools of water were these multicoloured uh, um, reflections that must be coming from what John has sent us because they're the same colours. Yes. Colours uh, of the rainbow. And the, the you don't normally get we've done this a lot of times. You don't you normally get that by looking at the sun. Yeah. So something something is bending the light from the sun and that's what causes uh, a uh, white light from the sun to become when it's broken up, it'll form the rainbow. So it's dispersing the angles of the light. So yes. there's planets in front of the sun that's causing it. Yeah, uh, but the colours of those planets are... Oh, the color, colours of the rainbow. <laughs> yeah. So we'll try and... Uh, now, uh, Mark is saying marijuana has been curing all sorts of diseases and vaccine damage. I believe the trees mentioned in the book of... Enoch. Well, Enoch is your main book that you want to concentrate on, although it is a bit long and drawn out. Uh, Enoch's the one that gave the measurements to the of the earth to the uh, his offspring, and they were all alive at the time, which was Sutla and his sons. Enoch um, was the father of them all, and they were Essenes. So Mark is also, why were they cast down to earth? Boom. A prison for judgment. The earth is where it's all going to happen in regards to being a replacement, uh, replaced rather, all across the, the uh, physical Milky Way galaxy and out into the universe forever. In my father's house, there's many mansions, it was my house, right? So there's many mansions. What they are is planets ready to be occupied, just like the Garden of Eden, that's all of a sudden come into existence. And um, Adam lasted one hour. So the fall of man, if you like, is a sorting out of uh, allowing the evil of uh, free will, because that's what it's all about, to run its course. And then uh, it got so bad by the time of the flood they had to be destroyed, and that's what caused the gravitational field of the earth to change, because what I was saying a day or two ago was that when you've got the heavenly existence Think of it as a thought, and then you go and make a movie. All right? So you've got the heavenly thought, and then it manifests as reality in a material world, realm where you've got to have time, and you've got to have matter, and you've got to have electrons and atoms, so forth, to make up matter. So at the centre of the earth is a white hole that's pouring through from the heavenly realm. And it poured through until the Earth was at its maximum size of 25,000 miles around its perimeter. And then uh, that, that also contained the material that would eventually become the moon. So at that point in time, the reptiles did not require a moon to breed. They required temperature. So any of these large dinosaurs, because of the pouring through of the iron at the centre of the Earth, um, it was spinning because it was spinning, it was giving off an EMF or electromagnetic fields or magnetic fields, and that caused a repulsion of the atoms that the animals were made of, so therefore they become lighter, or they were lighter. So you get a gigantic animal that might be 25 feet tall, which in today's measurements might be, say, 30 tons, but in those days it might have been 5 tons, because the gravity was far less. That's what made animals larger. The body of an animal can only reach a certain size under the constraints of the gravity and the air that it lived within and temperature. So therefore uh, men were also very large. If you actually you find it in the Bible that there were giants in those days. Well they were. And there are uh, many uh, giants have been found especially in America where uh, there were men 12, 14, 15 feet tall and um, these were quite well known around the turn of the century and then, because once the loving people got in there, they're lovely people, aren't they? Cheers, <laughs> once they started to control all universities and museums, they uh, eliminated 
and put into the archives where you can't find them in the basement somewhere where these giants were. And if you go to Glastonbury, for example, there's a, a giant there, which is in one of the castles. It was 9, 10, 12 feet tall or something like that. So um, all around the world there's been giants found. Now, there's also exaggerations as well. You see there's people where there's bullshit ones, and this is done by the lovely people again, the chosen ones. And uh, it shows a skull that might be eight foot long and uh, a, a human being being 50 feet tall. That's bullshit. Because when you do a forensic analysis of the photographs, you find that they are all put together with Photoshop or something like that. But there is, in fact, a man called Childers, for example. Uh, he uh, has done investigations in the United States. And um, there were these red-haired giants that ate people, uh, noted by the uh, American Indians, that um, they finish them off by having them in a cave and burn them alive to get rid of them. So um, these skeletons were found, 50 or 60 of them found, in a, and they were all 9, 10, 12 feet tall. So there were giants in those days, and these are just people that uh, existed throughout time. So. Today, the uh, gravitational field of the Earth is stronger because the spinning iron ore that's pouring in through the heaven, heavenly realm has slowed to a dribble, if you like, and is hardly rotating at all. So therefore, the gravitational field of the Earth is much, much less. Now, go back in time before the Flood, when the gravitational field was uh, different again, we have Mars bump into the Earth because the solar system, it can't remain stationary. Everything is moving throughout the universe. It's all moving. And the reason for that is, and in particular the solar system, if we was to find that the sun was to stop, uh, the Earth would suddenly be drawn in towards the sun and within a few days it become unbearably hot and we all be wiped out. So therefore, the sun has got to move either north or south. Well, with the fall of Adam or the flood and so forth, um, the solar system was moving southward away from the equatorial line of the Milky Way galaxy, which is, oh, by the way, 100,000 light years wide. We now know that now from the 1980s. So you've got 100,000 or 1 times pi is pi. So that's the pi and the golden ratio is what the creation is based on. That's why in the plants you see the golden ratio of 1.618, which is a spiral of a plant growing, for example. And uh, many have five uh, petals, etc., which is farther in Greek. So it's all based on the synchronistic idea that we are now able with our modern science and we're giving you a little bit of a head start to uh, be able to follow it. So that the giants in those days, uh, the human beings have to be wiped out because they've become so evil that uh, they were indeed wiped out with the flood. So what the flood happened, the water from Mars, you know, look at Mars. Now, let's be logical about this, let's speculate the bullshit that they go on about these scientists, they drive me crazy. There's no water left on Mars, yet there was water, it's obvious, right? They've even got ice caps still there. Where's the water gone? Hit the earth, where's it gone? 100 days or so that the water started to pour onto the earth and 40 days of deluge was a gigantic river of water of pouring onto the earth, which the earth rotated through this 100 mile high or maybe higher wave of water, of flood, that was so immense that all planets suffered through it. So it doesn't mean a wave of water that is condensed into a wave that we see in the sea today. It's just very, very, very heavy rain. Right? So you can still breathe in it, but it's very, very torrential. So this is what happened in various parts of the world. So did the flood exist? Of course it does. You've got 600 reports from all the ancient people of the world of the flood existing. So what happened. Now, Mark is also asking, what do you make of Avebury, the sun circle, and stone henge? Which well, these are all these are all constructed. It's basically done with a uh, an antler. An antler. An <laughs> they dug it out with an antler. It's a mile. It's a mile across. So there's a mile times pi is pi. It's 65 feet deep and about 100 feet wide. This is Avery I'm talking about. And it's all done with astronomical numbers. And they said they did it with an antler. This is how dumb people are, right? And these people are in there, they work at Oxford. <laughs> oh, well, you've got to be a complete idiot. Yeah, you want a job at Oxford? Yeah, right. I'm a moron. I just get a lunatic or something. We were there at Stonehenge two years ago. Yes, yeah. and the sun, of course, is not coming up in the right spot. We was at uh, Glastonbury. We observed the sun there being wrong. 
And when, if you look at uh, what some of the things I wrote about in, uh, in response to Pope Benedict was the uh, Vatican III, that in the old days, which has been changed in Vatican II, um, that all churches were oriented facing east, exactly east, in the rising of the sun, and then go across and the altar would be set up to be lined up with east so that the sun would shine through through the windows or through the open door or whatever, onto the altar. Well, Vatican II changed all that. So Vatican III put it all back. Now, when we were in Avesbury, uh, not Avesbury, uh, Glastonbury. Glastonbury, we looked at a, uh, a sundial, because I had all the GPS equipment with me, and you can rely on that because we've got not only GPS, we've also got on, in the GPS a magnetic field that can take the north and south pole. So we found out that there was, in the 80s, a, uh, a round stone that had been set up. And uh, 82 was it? Mm. At the same time they discovered the arc. The arc had come in. Mm. And uh, of course it's no longer north and south, east and west. It's all out. Because we just placed the uh, sticks on it, made a shadow. And then also we did it with the rise and set of the sun, midday. And also uh, with the GPS. We could tell that it was out by several degrees and the front of the church was out as well. So that means that the uh, mass of the earth has shifted in relationship to the North Pole. So no, we're not talking about the magnetic North Pole here, we're talking about the axis of the earth shifting. So that's what that's all about. So today, if you was in the Great Pyramid looking out into the North Star, it's not there anymore because the axis of the earth has tilted. It's all moved. Right? So was that the answer to that question? Yes. Now Mark is also talking about uh, uh, Glastonbury, the chalice well. Yeah. The Christ blood was put into it. I drank the water from there and it did feel beneficial. Well, there's, well, actually, there's a, actually a photograph uh, when we were on the tour. Um, it's not on the internet, but it is in our archives where, uh, yes, Yah drank from the spring that feeds the well. Because uh, the, the chalice well is down lower in the town, but we're on the tour, and there's a spring uh, at the, the bottom of the tour there. Yeah, it's all semi commercial article. And the, um, there's, <laughs> yes, we, we refused to pay the £7.50, whatever it was, each to go in and see the chalice well because it's all commercialised. But I did have a conversation with a homeless woman living in the area, um, or living, uh, yeah, she was living out of her car and might have been some kind of a, a park, um, like a caravan park. But she was coming to the uh, tap running Brilliant. alongside. Uh, like across the road, it's a commercial one, so yeah. you get it straight at the wall, right? So yes, same water. And she was filling up her, her pots. From the mm. one coming from the wall, and this is the thing that we enjoyed about Italy and Switzerland is that the, the water fountains there are fabulous and they are everywhere, so yeah. that uh, a person might have nothing else but they have plenty of water and it's good clean mm. alpine water. And the the fruit and vegetables aren't uh, poisoned like they are in Australia, for example. Mm. With an apple here, there's 21 soft chemicals in a season placed on an apple, right? So you're eating that crap. So mm -hmm. uh, before that was hard chemicals. So what were they doing to you? I mean, the horns growing out the back of your head. Yeah, absolutely. So... Uh, yes, there is a Jesus well. There, there's all kinds of... Well, that's the, the chalice well. Um, it's all connected. We were there. We saw the... Uh, the wattle tree, the tree that was yeah. um, moved. It was moved, a sprig of it was planted inside the gardens of uh, Glastonbury, the monastery there. And of course, the last abbot of Glastonbury, uh, Richard White was his name. Uh, this is interesting. Oh, 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 yeah, on, on our first climb, which was uh, in the afternoon on the Friday, because we went back on the Monday. The Friday, this is the day that there were no shadows. It was a very odd day as we climbed for the first time the Glastonbury tour and I started to feel very sick. 
by the time I got to the top, I, I said to Yara, I feel sick, really, really sick. And he helped me climb the last steps. And then we get into the uh, tower, which is St. Michael's Tower, what remains from what was a, um, a cathedral on the tour, to learn that this is the place where Richard White was hung. And two others. And two others was hung, drawn and quartered by the men working for Henry VIII. And I read prior to this, because uh, it is directly related to the Colburn Bible, which we have a printed copy of, uh, the true writings of uh, the ancients and the teachings of Jesus, that it uh, was the Colburn manuscript that Richard White was protecting and refusing to hand over to the men of Henry VIII. Because this is where Protestantism started with Henry VIII, the butcher, a very evil man, disgusting. And God of syphilis. Yes. Um, so, on learning that, that explained why I felt so sick. I had the same reaction as we unwittingly drove across the um, catacombs while we were in Rome, uh, just trying to follow directions from the GPS, making our way in our car for the first time to the Vatican and uh, I'm feeling sick and then I find out that we just travelled over the catacombs where there are more, six million or more skulls of Angel Landers, the English. This is the sport. A lot of people don't realise that the 370 odd years or whatever it was of the butchery that went on in Rome under the likes of Caligula and Nero and this people. Um, they were um, fighting and trying to invade England at that time. And so the uh, people that they bring back to go into the Colosseums were primarily English. And um, the English people were primarily blue-eyed and uh, light skin, of course, and uh, looked like angels to the Romans at that time. And they called them angel landers. No, the angels from the other land, and that's what they were saying. And there are over six million skulls. Now, analysis of the skulls themselves show that they are a British skull. So you can take each ethnic group, and the skulls do vary, our bone structures do vary from uh, race to race. And that's amongst the Europeans, all the white people, they are slightly different. And uh, primarily, you can tell which of them are of British stock, and there are six million skulls. We know of under Rome in the catacombs. Yeah. Now Mark continues, he says, there's a little church next to Avebury Sun Circle. It says, apparently Christ visited that place, I was told. We have to make the distinction. Um, he is the Christ today. To call him the Christ uh, as the first time round is uh, not, right. not right. He was Jesus, known as Jesus. And yes, he would be the Christ. He's the Christ today, being the Father and the Son because he is the son, all grown up into the father. And it was all about today. This, even the writings of um, Pontius Pilate and Caiaphas talk about uh, the teachings as Jesus were prophetic and foretold of a time in the future, a time of judgment. It's today. So uh, as Jesus, yes, yes, Mark, more than likely, absolutely, these areas are, are not too far distant from each other. And uh, here, I, I believe, uh, would have been Jesus built the first church on Glastonbury. Well, he was there with his uncle a lot, and he would have prepared a place for his mother, which he, which he did. because it, There is a house there called for Mary. Yes, um, and that was the Christ family home, that area. So on the cross, he's looking down at his mother and the other two Marys, who are huddled together. And myself as Martha, his wife, and I was pregnant with his twins. But it's not mentioned in the Bible. This is the whole thing. You've got three Marys at the cross, but Martha's not mentioned, the one that loved Jesus the most. Why? Well, because the church wants to write Martha out of the picture, because Martha, like today, does all the work. Mm. That's why I basically lay back and do nothing. Yes, <laughs> say, go on, we're going to do this, that, and the other, and he just goes, oh, right, okay, oh, okay oh, whatever. And then, like like today with the BDM, because I'm doing everything for him and on his behalf, but it's in his name. Um, I uh, had to actually speak to the people. Yes, on the phone. yes, that, that, that was the app. 
So is the applicant you or no, the applicant is my husband. Well, can I speak to your is he there? Yes, just a moment, he will just tell you to do whatever I ask you to do. <laughs> so he answers, yes, 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 date of birth, yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, well, you better tell that to my wife. Here she is. <laughs> it's comical. But, um, um, yeah, so all of these things, that the, the, the legends of those areas are, are truth, valid, because this is what he's been telling the world. That's where he went. He didn't go to India, for goodness sake. Hello. The last time I went to India was last month. La yes, in March. March of this year. That's the only time that uh, Jesus has been in India. And it was to judge the place. It's an abomination. Their religions are pathetic, they're stupid. Hindi, Hindi has part of it right, but it has been so evolved and corrupted and, oh, and comes down oh, today really? where it's okay to ignore the plight of the untouchables and all of these because that's, that's what they have earned in their last life. Um, take a newborn baby because it's an untouchable, so you live, live it under the bridge somewhere, it doesn't matter about it. Yeah, it's vile and they build these monuments. They have the, uh, they have the intelligence... Uh, and the wherewithal to be able to build these monuments, the Ash, I think it's called the Ashkaram Temple, it covers 100 acres. It took, uh, oh. in, in this day, it was finished in 2005. It is an amazing uh, work of art, architecture, well, we didn't landscaping. Go. We didn't go, we read about it. But at the same time, it, it was uh, one million volunteers, so one million people uh, volunteered their labour, and yet all around oh. the poverty, the villages, the... But this is built for a Swami. It, it's, yes, built to the memory of a Swami who died in 1968 anyway, and uh, it takes up 100 acres of... And this building that is beyond belief could house all of those around that have no... Nowhere but their shanties by the side of a very busy road anyway. It could house them all. So it really is pathetic. Their, their images to their dead swamis and uh, their, their idols. and it, uh, It's sickening. It, it make, made us really angry. Uh, but we did go to the St. Michael's Church. That's the point. Yes, it was all about... Two, 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 two eight metres above sea level. Yeah. St. Michael's Church. Which is exactly the same height of uh, Mount Kosciuszko in Australia. Now, uh, uh, Mark is continuing to ask, he says, I know this might sound a silly question, but will the reaping angels appear in the physical dimension? Yep. He says they seem to be covertly working at the moment. Yes, they, they really are working a It's lot. a matter of timing. Hmm. You can't rush time. These things are preordained by the speed of the solar system northward at the moment, which has already crossed over the Milky Way galaxy. That's why we know it's accurate because it was predicted by the Mayan calendar, although the Mayan calendar was not um, accurate in compared to the Gregorian calendar because the Gregorian calendar left out 375 days. But the Mayan calendar was correct, so calling it the 21st of December 2012 was wrong. It was actually the 11th of December in 2011. That's why we did, if you've seen some of our older videos of the Coriolis effect and how the water draining down your sink is changed and reversed, and that's what the the uh, bullshit is on about now with the uh, heating up of the earth, because they are trying to um, deflect away from the fact that the Coriolis effect of the Milky Way galaxy has caused water to drain down your sink the reverse of what it was prior to 2011 and also this affects the clouds and the seas and all, everything else so therefore your weather is all stuffed up because the clouds are going backwards right you can see it on satellites no problem but they're not going to talk about that because they regard you all as being an idiot and it involves the creation which most of you are i must admit <laughs> no, i mean in a very nice way <laughs> well you know well, we got a handful of followers out of out of seven billion people. That's not a real success rate, is it? So, uh, understanding what I'm trying to teach, and uh, there's only a few of you that's got the intelligence to be able to follow it. Right? That's what it's all about. So, to me, I'm not talking about you people because you found us and you, you can understand. But the world itself, to me, is like a uh, insane asylum. 
Now they get away with it because they're all insane. Mm. And, uh, well, it was uh, last night and night before. There needs to be a culling and it is going to be happening. It's just well, see, like you've already accepted death and the point is um, most people are going to die anyhow. Right? So you can blame me if you like, I don't care. But I'm just going to hurry things up a bit because there is a, a time where this is all coming together where we can't carry on with the, uh, with the way the world is because of what they're actually doing. I mean, I'm, well, this is gross worldwide genocide is what they're doing. Now, if you were preordained to survive that genocide, then you're one of the boys and girls, right? If you aren't, then you're being cleaned out, if you like, by the, the beast itself, the lovely switches that control and dominate the earth through the Zionism, and uh, they're really doing the job for me. Right? You say, oh, some poor little baby died, blah, blah, blah. Well, that, that baby could have grown up to be a, uh, an axe murderer. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So everybody has had a life before, and even though they might not survive uh, at the hands of these monsters that's poisoning them, in a way they're doing the job for the angel. So it has always been all good for the good. You've got to move your soul from within your blood to the outside. You've got to start wearing it as a garment. And you've got to do that, and the only way you can do that is by recognising me. So therefore, get it in your mind. Start thinking, get my soul on the outside. Let's start wearing it on the outside, and you will be protected. If you don't, well, you've got a problem. Mm. With that, we're out of time. Are we? Oh, good. Yes. Ah. <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> All right, guys, it is uh, one o'clock, and... It's Friday here, so... I found... I, I just put an anti-malware program in this computer, which I haven't been using, and found 615 malware in it. How many? 615. 615 malware. That's why the things run so slow. Wow. And that's All these programs not... start up, see? Yes. And they're running in the background. Yeah. And every time you do something, you go to email or whatever, they pop up. Yes. One yeah. after another. Okay, all right, that's it. That should be a death sentence for doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, here, we're considered intelligent, laugh out loud, because we're not insane. Proof being we found the Christ and understand the message. Something like that. All good. All good for the good. I'll just uh, put the choir on, go out with the choir plug, and we'll be back on Monday. It is the weekend here. We'll be back Monday, just a minute. Here we go. The Goa and Marshall Ash on FreedomTalkRadio.net Alright, later Gators. Have a good weekend. Have, have, you, no, on Monday night, did you have a good weekend? This is the one word. Did you have a good weekend? So, have a good weekend now. <laughs> oh, forget it. Yah's got this look on his face like, are you insane? <laughs> <laughs>